Thank you. Okay. Thank you for interesting, uh, introducing me. Uh, so today, uh, I will talk about something that is about the drug physics and topology uh, in photonics. I hope this will give uh, some inspiration to make uh, some uh, normal photonic device that could be used for in quantum optics or other applications. Uh, many of them is at a very initial stage that uh, there are a lot of uh, questions you can ask. Uh, I'll tell you some fundamental about this drug basics, and then i talk about uh, how to make it uh, to work in photonic system. So uh, the outline of my talk has uh, just three parts. Uh, in the first part, uh, I will talk generally about drug, drug equation and band topology, and then uh, I'll tell you how to really simulate uh, this drug physics in photonics because photon is a boson, it's quite different from electron. So you want to do drug physics, you have to fulfill some uh, conditions that is not easy to meet. You need some uh, uh, either smart material design or some uh, symmetry design. I will focus on the net. So uh, drug equation is actually proposed uh, almost 100 years ago by Dirac. At that time, uh, a lot of people is trying to combine uh, special relativity uh, together with, uh, quantum, uh, with uh, quantum, quantum theory. So initially, people proposed the uh, klein gordon equation to describe uh, uh, relativistic quantum waves. But there is some issue that uh, actually noticed first by Schrodinger that uh, uh, there will be some negative probability in, in the system because uh, there is a second order in uh, directive in time. So at that time, uh, Dirac was thinking of uh, how to just uh, square root uh, this whole thing. So Nesbor was asking about him or uh, what he, he was doing. He said that I'm just trying to square root something, something that is very fundamental, that uh, has a long lasting impact in science. So uh, basically, he take a uh, uh, four by four matrix. Uh, he called it alpha and beta, and uh, to make it uh, uh, as a coefficient before the uh, momentum and uh, also the mass of the electron, uh, in such a way that uh, uh, this matrix, the square root, to be the identity matrix, but they are anti commuter with each other. So if you do a square of this Hamiltonian, you will get precisely the klein gordon Hamiltonian that uh, fulfills uh, the relativity relation, and uh, it's a wave equation. So, uh, so uh, several years later, uh, Hermann Weyer noticed that uh, if it sets the mass uh, m here to be zero, then you can like uh, divide the Dirac Hamiltonian into two uncorrelated parts which he called uh, uh, left-handed and right-handed fermions. So this left-handed fermions is written like this, uh, with Hamiltonian, and right-handed Hamiltonian is with, with opposite sign. So you can see that uh, this will give you a drug cone, which is one of the most uh, like impact and beautiful image that we have uh, uh, in, in the past decades. So, uh, so I want to emphasize one thing that in my talk, whenever I mention drug points, I mean that uh, it's a fourfold linear uh, dispersion cousin. Uh, but Y points is just a two point. So sometimes there is a mixing of uh, different terminology. So you can see that a drug point consists of two Y points with opposite clarity. But in the more general case, you can define it uh, as a kind of uh, uh, tensor uh, form, but in, in general, it's a linear uh, cousin uh, with some camera properties. So, uh, recent years, this uh, drug and the points has been realized in condensed matter system. So, uh, for example, uh, 2D, um, usually we don't have vibe points, so we call everything that is linear cousin uh, as a drug point. That uh, in graphene, we actually, if we take a nearest label, type binding model, you will see that uh, at k and k prime point, you have two linear cosine. Uh, if you write down the effective Hamiltonian with 
how they uh, with sigma z representing this A and B sub lattice, uh, with tau z representing k and k prime values, then you will arrive at this Hamiltonian. Uh, what is more, uh, you can visualize it in this way. If you look at uh, the pseudo spin polarization, you can see that uh, with the k value, it's rotating uh, with, uh, uh, with the opposite value number compared to the k prime value. Uh, so, uh, people have thinking about uh, how to uh, introduce a mass in the drug equation. So, you have actually two ways to do that. Uh, the first way is breaking inversion symmetry. That is to make A and B have different uh, uh, potential energy. The second way is breaking time reversal symmetry. This is actually uh, considered by Professor Horton years ago. So he considered that uh, to make a next nearest neighbor hopping with a finite phase, which breaks time reversal symmetry. And uh, you will arrive at uh, a mass term that is proportional to both the sigma z and also tau z, tau z describe that uh, for the different value. So you introduce uh, a value dependent mass, but here the mass is not a value dependent. So in doing so, actually, we come to the concept of, the, of topology. So topological chain number is actually the integral very curvature over the brain zone. I'm not going to talk in too much about the details, but uh, what is useful for us is that uh, it is a shortcut to, uh, to contain the topological number or to create uh, topological materials. So uh, if you look at uh, the dispersion, once we introduce uh, this direct mass, if you do the, the way with breaking inversion symmetry, then you will have uh, two values with the same uh, Dirac mass, but they are of opposite value number. So this shortcut gives us that uh, the, the value chain number is just the, the half of the sign of this mass and also the value number. And because the value number of the two value are opposite, so the total chain number is zero. But if we do it in the way that the Professor Hodan introduced temporal so inversion uh, breaking, temporal so breaking, uh, broken, so you will have that uh, they have opposite uh, mass and they have opposite value number, so come up with uh, the same sign of uh, value chain number, and in total you have a chain number of uh, half plus half. You can also do it uh, uh, in a way that uh, Ken and Mini introduce this uh, spin orbit coupling term, which is uh, also proportional to SC. SC is a, is a true spin, uh, it's an electron spin one half plus one half and minus one half. Uh, so because of uh, uh, spin orbit coupling and time reversal symmetry, uh, it is also opposite, uh, this mass is also opposite for spin up and spin down. So you, you can introduce uh, for the spin up, you have a chain number one, and the spin down, you have a chain number half minus one. So this will give you, uh, on the edge, the spin up is moving right hand, uh, from left to right, and uh, but the spin down is moving from the right to left. So these are the basic elements that uh, uh, we, we, we have for topology and Dirac physics. Uh, this, will, uh, this research is on the topology actually leads to the Nobel Prize uh, last year. And uh, let's look at uh, how to do it uh, uh, in photonic system. But first the question is uh, why topology is important in photonic system. Uh, there are several reasons. The first one is that it's actually uh, a new way to trap in light, because once you put two materials together, they have uh, the same band gap, but different uh, topological property. You will introduce uh, some, uh, uh, some edge states that uh, will appear definitely on the boundary. This is a new net trapping mechanism, you can think of. It also offers robust wave guiding, for example, you can have one-way wave guiding that the photon is going just from left to right without any chance to go back. Uh, the third thing is that uh, you can use a, use a dark, point, dark cone to create some zero refractive index behavior. It's effectively like a, zero, uh, a medium with a zero refractive index. I will show you that uh, 
it has many interesting properties. So the third one is that with direct code, we, uh, we can also can create uh, synthetic gauge fields. Uh, and uh, I was also talking about uh, enormous reflection that we find uh, uh, in recent work. So the, the first important uh, uh, experimental advancement is, uh, is done by MIT group uh, Professor Marvin Sojak and uh, Professor Jonavlas. So actually, uh, the first theory is also done by Professor Hoden. Uh, it was on archive like uh, three years before it published. And then they published on PIL together with the M MIT group. Uh, so uh, MIT group uh, initiated uh, a square lattice photonic crystal uh, by applying a magnetic field along Z direction. Uh, it creates uh, uh, the photonic band with uh, chain number one, and then you can have a one-way edge state between the, the second photonic band and the third photonic band. So in experiments, this is very vivid. So one of the advantages of photonic system is that you can really measure the wave function of the edge states. You can see that once you have a point source here, uh, etc. You, point the, uh, you put the frequency in the photonic band gap. So you can excite the edge states that is going from left to right without any chance to excite any wave that's going from right to left. So even you put a metallic slit here to stop them, they will go like uh, along this barrier to continue moving forward. This is a benchmark uh, uh, experiment in the field. So the second effect is that you can use drug cone to mimic a zero, uh, effect with zero medium, uh, as has shown by this work by Professor Sui Chi Chang in Hong Kong University of uh, Science and Technology. Uh, from scattering theory, you can, you can actually show that it's the effective permittivity and permittivity uh, as this uh, drug frequency is precisely zero. So this is very special properties, which means that uh, at this frequency, the, the, the wavelength of the photon is effectively infinite norm. So it propagates, the net propagates in a way like a fluid without, uh, it goes through uh, water barriers and uh, small junctions without any phase accumulant. So uh, you can also use the special property of drug point, such as you, you deform the lattice, if I change the position of the drug point, it effectively create a synthetic gauge field. And the, uh, in experiments, people can even observe such a deformation can induce an photonic Landau levels. Uh, so uh, there is also a lot of experiments moving towards uh, the optical frequency uh, in the past uh, few years. One of the first one is by Professor Hafiz. Uh, in Maryland, they create uh, such a pattern by these uh, carved cavities. Uh, so they choose just one, one mode, uh, the left rotating mode or right rotating mode to make sure that uh, it uh, mimics a kind of uh, quantum hole insulator. So you can see that uh, the light can propagate only along the edges, the boundaries. Uh, uh, the, the group in Taclion also create uh, some optical frequency topological states of photon using the spiral optical fibers. But these structures usually has a, a lattice constant that is much larger than the wave frequency. So you, they don't have actually topological net shaping because the net shaping is already achieved by each lattice uh, set, site, by each element like uh, the optical fiber here is already a trap is not inside the uh, index guiding, but there is also no way sub-wavelength physics in such system, no stronger net matter interaction. Uh, so what we're trying to uh, do is trying to build in some uh, all the electric uh, structures that may have dark physics or topological properties a photon, uh, so that uh, it may be useful at optical frequency or if you like, you can also build such a structure at microwave frequency to do many uh, interesting physics. So the, uh, the crucial difficulty here is that uh, 
actually drag point is a four foot digit point. So you need to create a spin, which means that uh, you, need, you need to create a double degeneracy at certain wave vector. Because photon is boson, the Kramer uh, theorem does not guarantee such a double degeneracy at uh, k equal to zero and in time also uh, invariant wave vector. Uh, you would think that uh, photon has a spin of plus one and minus one, but this is usually broken in uh, the electric uh, structures. And the people also think of using uh, electromagnetic duality symmetry to, to make sure that there is a double D jersey. But all these requirements are, all this uh, can only be fulfilled by very special, very specially designed materials. So if we use only the electrical materials to build the whole thing, this will not working. Uh, so but at optical frequency, uh, all the other like uh, magnetic optical effect or duality effect, uh, they just vanish. Only the electric uh, material guarantees you to have something that is uh, it does not have have significant noise, because metal also induces a lot of plasmonic noise. So we don't include that possibility. So uh, that thing is that uh, uh, you you also have to have an orbit, which means. Uh, in the drug equation, you have spin degeneracy, and then you also have positron and uh, electron sect. Then the, the interaction between the positron and the electron sect is collinear. To ensure that such a collinear Hamiltonian, we have to have an uh, orbit with opposite parities. So we need to have a, a, something we call the parity inversion to make sure that uh, this uh, drug physics happens to the photonic system. So this is a lot of challenge. We are actually very much doing the similar thing, like uh, we are trying to create, a, to simulate a drug Hamiltonian, the square of which gives you uh, precisely the Hamiltonian of the photon uh, that uh, uh, in the Maxwell equation, which is uh, second order derivative in time. So uh, this first sub lens photonic crystal that realizes uh, this topological insulators with temporal symmetry is by Professor Hu in NIMS in Japan. Uh, he noticed that uh, in honeycomb lattice of a photonic crystal, you always have a drug point at the K and K prime point. But you do a band folding, if you contain like uh, six micro pillars, these uh, blue regions are uh, silicon micro pillars with the, the electric constant like uh, 12. Uh, but you can do with other materials as well. If you put uh, six micro pillars in each unit cell, you form a, a triangle lattice, and then you fold uh, the drug point at uh, K and K prime back to the ground zone center at gamma point. So this is a four fold uh, uh, drug point. Uh, they just tune the distance between the unit size center and uh, the center of each micro pillar. Uh, they can make uh, uh, the, the six micro pillar come together then they will create uh, a photonic band gap uh, which has trivial topology. They, they can do, also do the opposite to make this uh, distance r increase. And then they also create another band gap, which is actually topological uh, band gap. I will show you in more details. And I will show you how to realize the same thing, same thing with other electric structures. So here, uh, because it's a 2D problem, still assume like a metallic uh, collating in the Z direction. Uh, a possible solution is to consider slab of photonic crystal design with only the electric materials that uh, a lot of people can fabricate. Uh, so actually we have done this uh, experiment in microwave uh, frequency. We do engineer uh, such uh, uh, triangle lattice with uh, micro pillars. Each of them is uh, Alumna. So we can choose the distance, like uh, we have two characteristic uh, distance here. One is uh, between the micro pillars within each, each unit cell, the other is between micro pillars uh, uh, in inter unit cell. So if H1 is equal to H2, you go back to the honeycomb lattice and you have a drug point here. If H1 is larger than H2, you enter into the topological phase. If H1 is smaller than H2, you get into a trivial band gap. 
So, uh, so we do see in the calculation and also in the uh, experiments that uh, there is two edge states here. One carries like uh, orbital angular momentum uh, with, uh, uh, that is pointing to z direction. The other one with orbital angular momentum pointing to the opposite direction. They are uh, traveling, they are propagating in opposite directions. So uh, we are actually able to create a source that with certain phase difference between these four, four point source that you can create a, um, a source with angular momentum. So, so we can selectively excite only one of them. Uh, and we do see that uh, the photon is propagating, the night is the, the, uh, the wave, the electromagnetic wave is propagating getting only from left to right without uh, a chance to go back. If you look at uh, uh, the transmission as, as a function of frequency within the band gap, we see very clearly that uh, the photon is going very significantly from left to right without going back. And there is a, a net trimming on the interface between these two uh, photon crystals. One is topological, the other is trivial. So uh, I will also show you how to do this with some simpler structures, such as this Kosha structure. Uh, this blue region, we just put it as silicon, and the dark uh, and the light blue region is just uh, the air. So, so we have uh, silicon hollow cylinders uh, forming a triangle lattice. So you can see there is several eigen modes. The first one is the S mode, and then you have two double degenerate P mode and then two double degenerate, uh, two degenerate uh, E mode and, and another single F mode. So this double degeneracy of P and D, we can use it as a pseudo spin up and a pseudo spin down. Uh, so in, in, for, for example, we, have, we can have spin, pseudo spin up P orbits and a pseudo spin down P orbits, which carry angular momentum plus and the, uh, plus and the minus one, and the four. you can also do the same thing for the D orbits. So if you look at uh, the microscopic theory using this KWP method uh, that is known in condensed matter physics, but you do it for the Maxwell equation, you can see that we actually arrive at a Hamiltonian that is very precisely like uh, uh, the quantum spin hole Hamiltonian that people proposed uh, uh, almost 10 years ago, and uh, more than 10 years ago. You, it, you come up with a Hamiltonian that you can separate into two uh, uncorrelated parts. For this part, it's only spin up electron in the B, P orbit coupled to the D orbit. You can see that uh, there is a carrier coupling between them uh, with this. You can see that it's precisely like a massive drug Hamiltonian. If omega P equal to omega D, you get a massless drug Hamiltonian. Uh, if the sign uh, frequency, uh, the relative frequency of the, these two switches we enter into a topological phase. If omega, omega p is larger than omega t, we get uh, uh, this PD inverse band which carries a Z2 topological number, uh, precisely like in the quantum spin hole uh, insulator that proposed 11 years ago. So uh, we actually obtain a phase diagram of this whole thing as a function of the uh, inner radius R2 and outer radius R1. You can see that uh, with this blue region, we have uh, a topological photonic band. Here, band gap. Here, we have trivial band gap. Uh, we also studied the inverse structure case, which uh, uh, epsilon 2 is just uh, equal to 1, and uh, the outside uh, uh, light blue region is uh, silicon. Uh, so we demonstrate uh, the topology by this edge state as well. Uh, if we put uh, some uh, topological photonic crystal together with a uh, trivial photonic crystal at the boundary, you will have edge states. But uh, somehow, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, we have this mini gap and the edge states. It's not a completely one way edge state. But this, you can regard it as a massive 1D drug photons, which we are trying to make use of it uh, to make uh, some uh, uh, edge sun newton state in the future, but um, we can also use a similar structure uh, that uh, hollow cylinders connected the by six micro pillars. These are all, uh, all the yellow and the blue regions are also silicon. Uh, they, 
if you put them in a triangle lattice, in a hexagonal lattice, you will also have uh, some, somehow similar symmetry, and then we can create uh, a dark point in a three-dimensional photonic crystal. You can see there is double degenerate P orbits and double degenerate P orbits. Uh, because we have C6V and mirror symmetry, we can actually pre um, preserve the degeneracy between the two P orbits and the, also for the 2D orbits. The causing point is for, for the degenerate. So if you look at this KWP Hamiltonian, it's precisely like a 3D dark, uh, uh, dark Hamiltonian, like the one uh, Dirac has proposed many years ago uh, to describe uh, the relativistic uh, electron wave. So, uh, yeah, there are many like uh, topological, uh, because this drug point is like a topological kink. I, I won't talk too much about that. But recently we come up with more, some more decent uh, uh, designs, which we make use of non-symorphic symmetry, which here is a screw symmetry. So the screw symmetry we had here, here we have this unit cell, which is a tetragonal uh, photonic crystal, and this is a unit cell. Uh, the, the, all these blockers, yellow and green, they are all made of silicon. We paint it with different color to show that uh, if you do a screw symmetry, which is like a 180 degree rotation, and then half light is translation, you will go from the yellow, uh, from the green block to the, to the yellow block. And you can do the same thing for the right direction. So this constitutes uh, two screw symmetries, which is uh, crucially important for us. So uh, one of the magic is that once you have screw symmetry, you can make an uh, anti-unitary uh, operate, which you call theta x, uh, which is uh, Sx screw symmetry, uh, screw rotation along x direction, multiply the time reversal, in photonic system, time reversal operator is just a complex conjugation. So if you combine these two together, you will reverse both, uh, uh, you, will also, you will transform both the space and the time together. But if you do it twice, the uh, complex conjugation will, uh, will cancel each other, and then you, you just come up with uh, uh, twice of this uh, uh, screw symmetry. Because in each one of them, you, you do a half lattice translation. So two of them come up together with a lattice translation along the x direction, which gives you additional phase. If you add uh, the kx equal to pi over a plane, which is a brand uh, zone boundary plane, you will have this uh, anti-unitary operator squared to give you minus one. So this is precisely like uh, the Kramer's, uh, uh theory for theorem for electron uh, to have degeneracy at uh, k equal to zero. So here we have, uh, uh, we created this Kramer uh, double de degeneracy using this screw symmetry uh, so that we have a double degeneracy for all the photonic uh, block states on the kx equal to pi over a plane. This also holds for the other plane of uh, ky equal to pi over a. So with this, Actually, we can, uh, we can see that uh, one of the special line is AM line at which uh, KS equal to KY equal to pi over A. Uh, on this line, you can see that uh, every line here is actually two photonic bands. So uh, I showed, uh, I showed uh, uh, the field profiles here for the D orbits that actually D1 and D2 are degenerate. Uh, they're related to each other by SX and SY. We can also have P, two P orbits that uh, are degenerate with each other. We call it P1 and P2. They transform uh, from one to another by SX and SY screw symmetries. So very beautiful uh, degeneracy. And uh, because P and D states, they have opposite uh, parities, any of these clouds between uh, orbit, between photonic bands with opposite parity will be actually a three-dimensional drug point. So if you look at the dispersion of this drug point, this four drug point, so uh, if you look at uh, this point, it will give you a dispersion that is very tilted, which means that for both branches, you have positive uh, group of velocity along the direction, which uh, this is uh, precisely the type two drug point that uh, 
uh, people uh, found it, people observed, uh, you know, only recently people observed, observed the type 2 wire points in electronic systems. I think type 2 drug points has not been observed, even observed in electronic systems. Here we propose a, a photonic structure with only the electric materials that realizes this type 2 drug point. If you look at this crossing point, it's a type 1 drug point. You can see that uh, this type 2 drug point, uh, the iso frequency contour is very much like a parabola. Uh, and this one is very much like a uh, ellip ellip ellipse. Ellipse. OK, so they have very different uh, uh, dispersion properties that uh, may need to very different uh, uh, optical properties. So one of the things is that uh, this uh, drug points is actually topological. Uh, if we put them uh, um, yeah, uh, into a supercell, here we can see that just uh, we have a photonic crystal, and the boundary is actually between the photonic crystal and the air. So this is a very simple setup. Uh, uh, this is even simpler compared to what before people usually put uh, one type of photonic crystal and another photonic crystal. One of them is topological, the other is trivial. Here we just put a photonic crystal, and uh, there is a boundary between photonic crystal and air. So actually there is a topological surface mode that uh, is at this uh, boundary between photonic crystal and air. So if you look at the spectrum, there is this uh, green curve in the, in the photonic band gap. So this CD area is a light line, which means uh, the light can propagate uh, in this region into the air. But fortunately, we have this uh, surface mode below the light line, which means that uh, they cannot uh, radiate into the uh, continuum in the air, or vacuum, you can see. Uh, what is uh, one of the amazing property of this uh, topological surface data is that uh, if you're looking uh, if we place like uh, a dielectric uh, sync film on top of this interface, you can see that the frequency changes very slowly with the thickness of this uh, dielectric slab. But if you do the same thing with a traditional like uh, wood pipe photonic crystal, which has a complete band gap, and in the middle of this two photonic crystal with complete band gap, uh, you put a dielectric slab, then the frequency of this uh, defect layer, uh, defect mode localized at this layer is decreasing very quickly uh, as a function, as you increase the thickness of uh, this uh, uh, dielectric uh, symphony. So we do see some topological stable stability of uh, the surface state here. Uh, the other thing is that if you break in the temporal, so uh, break in the inversion symmetry, that is, we make the structure uh, does not have an inversion center uh, in a strange way. And you will see that uh, the double degeneracy is lifted away, and uh, the drug point is uh, kind of split into five points. Each of these uh, P band and D band crossing point is actually a two fold degenerator. Your, uh, wire points. You can see that in our system, we, we have type 2 wire points and also type 1 wire points. So if you look at uh, the uh, total angular momentum of photon at a tiny sphere that uh, surrounding this wire point, you can see that uh, the total angular momentum of photon is actually doing something like a uh, um, hedgehog uh, uh, configuration. And, uh, and the sphere, which, uh, is origin, which originates from uh, the topological nature of the wire points. So this angular momentum wave vector locking will give darker or wire points uh, a lot of um, special properties that uh, the back scratching, when you have a light propagating this photonic crystal, it's not easy to have this night wave back scattered. It will very robustly propagate uh, forward. So uh, we also find that uh, if you shed a light from air into this photonic crystal in the vicinity of the type 2 drug point, the light will split into two beams. They have precisely the same uh, the opposite uh, refraction angle. So one is positive refraction, the other is negative refraction. And no matter which frequency you choose, 
as long as we have this linear dispersion close to the drag point, and no matter which angle you, uh, the, the, net, the night wave is instant into this photonic crystal, uh, these two refraction angles is always opposite to each other. So this is one of the uh, very anomalous uh, property that uh, this system has. So I will summarize uh, my talk uh, at this page. Anyone has any questions? I was wondering the, the experimental systems, what's, what's the typical size in number of unit cells that you can... Okay, you mean the experimental one? This one? Yeah. Uh, this one is uh, for microwave uh, frequency. So the distance here is, um, is about one, mi mini, uh, one centimeter, the lattice constant. And the maximum number of uh, the, the effective size, so the number of unit cells that you can make in, in each direction is like, is that the actual size? Is like 10, something like that? Like this. Something like uh, 10, on the order of 10 to 10 unit cells. You don't need uh, actually very large uh, samples. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and can, uh, can you simulate, you know, the way in uh, uh, cold atoms, people try to simulate these artificial magnetic fields. Yes. Can you do something like that here? I don't know, rotate your sample or, or do something to... Yeah, I think uh, you can do many of the, uh, the, the similar physics in cold atoms or in the system that uh, Jacqueline uh, has uh, talked about this uh, power atom systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She also has this uh, lattice structure and uh, like... Uh, uh, the, the night is focused on each one of these micro lines and they, they talk to each other and then they, fo they form a lattice. If you engineer the lattice with uh, proper like tuning, in, like, like what we do here, you actually get a topological phase for the, for the night at, uh, that has a power time system. Yeah. You can also do it for the cold atom system. I think there is no problem. Uh -huh. uh, yes, there's a question here. This anomalous uh, refraction that you predict, is it related to Klein tunneling or Vesilago effect, or is, is it different? Yeah, uh, good question. So, uh, actually, I was, I was not uh, so ready for such a discovery. Because uh, even now, I don't have uh, like a very simple explanation for it. But if you look at uh, the dispersion here, uh, this is the isofrequency contour. So basically, uh, for type 2 drug point, both branches has, uh, has the same um, sign of uh, the group of velocity along z direction. So if you look at here, uh, both of them uh, have positive loop of velocity, both, both branches. Uh, if you look at the uh, acid frequency contour, you can see that uh, 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 the group of velocity is, uh, is labeled by, uh, is, is denoted by these arrows. You can see that for both branches, they are going from left to right first. And second is that uh, once the branch is going up, the other one is going down. So they are, trying, they are doing something that uh, one is propagating in this direction, the other on the other direction. So quantitatively, you can see that uh, uh, one of the refraction in this uh, branch has a positive refraction angle. The other one at uh, this blue branch has a negative uh, refraction angle. And uh, what is beautiful is that they are precisely opposite to each other. Uh, if I understood correctly, over there. if I understood correctly, most of these effects are, are classical. So, do you have any prospect to go towards the single photon regime or to have nonlinearities in these systems? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, um, yeah, actually, as uh, also told by, uh, I mean in many different systems that uh, we're trying to engineer the quantum physics. So we first enter into uh, the regime of wave dynamics. We want to have some uh, very 
unconventional wave dynamics or net matter interaction, it's, it's fine to be linear. Uh, and, then, and then afterwards, you can actually, you can ask many questions. You can use these photons to do something more, like uh, how to make a, a nonlinear interaction in these edge states. And also any quantum effect, like uh, uh, once you break, uh, uh, once you have a non-reciprocal photon that goes just on one direction, what will happen when an atom is coupled to this photon? How does uh, the system like uh, symbolize or talk to each other between one atom and another? I think there are a lot of things that you can think in, you can ask, in, you can play with it. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, my talk here is just uh, trying to firstly introduce you how we can build up uh, such a photon system, and then you can do many quantum optical things uh, using the system. Yeah. Is there an inherent loss time scale when the photon will leave the structure? So if you populate an edge mode, will it actually propagate along the edge, or after some time scale will it? Good question. Actually, there is uh, some... Uh, you can think of that some um, laws maybe due to like uh, the material property it uh, goes to like uh, uh, some uh, absorption or some kind of symbolization that gives energy to phonons. But uh, usually in electric materials, they are very good. They, they, they don't, you don't have like uh, considerable but laws. Can't it just go out to the vacuum? No, uh, so in most cases like uh, in our case, it's below the light line, you, you, you can't go to the vacuum. In other case, you put two photonic crystals together, both of them has a band gap. They cannot just tunnel through a very big band gap of material. That's a very small probability, right? So they just are confined in the edge and the boundaries. So yeah, you can use them once you have confined this waveguard. Or very recently, we are actually considering something that is um, uh, more fancier, uh, uh, because uh, the edge states uh, has just uh, one dimensional less than the bulk. So we are considering whether topology can guarantee less trapping in lower dimensions, such as two, dimension, two dimensions lower than the bulk. In that case, we probably have a chance to make a topological cavity if the frequency of this cavity is very robust to the disorder. Then you fabricate, when you fabricate this uh, cavity, you don't need to worry too much about uh, very careful fabrication because the inhomogeneous burden is so harmful for scalable integrated quantum device or uh, integrated optical device. Yeah, I think this may be more useful for the quantum optic uh, community. Yeah. Any last question? Otherwise, we close the session. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.